Welcome to all of you who are joining us for worship as we stand at a crossroad to discern where we have come from and where we are going. If you did not receive your Lenten bag, you're invited to pick one up in the office and act, if you're here this morning, there are some on the table in the back. As part of observing a holy Lent, you are invited to join us in the Bible study based on the book in your Lenten bag, Renegade Gospel, The Rebel Jesus. The study will focus on scripture and conversations on how we can walk closer to Jesus. The study will be offered on Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. and Wednesday evenings at 6.30 p.m. Please call the church office to register. On Tuesday, March 2nd from 2 to 7 p.m., there will be a blood drive here in our social hall. If you can be a donor, please register online at the Red Cross website. If you can volunteer to help for a couple of hours that day, please call the church office. In our scripture this morning, God finds an Egyptian slave girl with no voice, no status, and no faith, and meets her, meets her in her wilderness and calls her by name. God asks where she is coming from and where she is going, and then blesses her on her way. As we begin this Lenten journey, where are you coming from? And where are you going? Please join me in our call to worship. In the Christian narrative, God listens to everyone. God affords both the powerful and the powerless a chance to speak. chance to locate oneself in place and time. A chance to make a choice. A chance to move forward. The Lord will multiply your children for the Lord has heard your affliction. Those are our past present and future. You are ever loving and ever listening. As you bend your ear to Hagar, we know you will hear our afflictions, our hopes, our dreams. When the moment comes, let our ears be open to your holy instruction. Amen. Hey everybody, happy Sunday. I hope that you guys are having a great week. So I have to ask you a question. Where are you going? Now you're probably thinking, I'm not going anywhere. I'm sitting right here watching service. Or maybe you're thinking, I'm about to go to the bathroom or I'm about to go to the kitchen real quick. Or maybe you think about where you're going later today. There's lots of places that come to mind when someone asks us, where are you going? But I'm gonna ask you a little bit of a different question. Where are you going for God? That's a little bit harder, isn't it? In our scripture today, we hear about Hagar, and an angel of the Lord appears to her and asks her where she's going. And she tells him that she's actually running away. She was running away from a big problem in her life. And the angel told her to where to go. He told her to go back. Now, I don't know about you. I don't have an angel of the Lord in my life telling me every day where to go in person. But there are some ways that we can know where to go for God. Do you know what those are? That's right. When we read our Bible, we're growing in our relationship with God, and we can learn where, what his plan is for us and where he's leading us. When we pray, that's another great way to grow in our relationship with God and to know where he is leading us and where he wants us to go. And you're right. When we're kind and when we're loving others, we're actually following what he wants us to do. So this Lent, I want you to take some extra time to either pray or read your Bible and see where God is leading you. Where are you going for God? Let's go ahead and turn to God in prayer now. Will you guys fold your hands and bow your heads and repeat after me, please? Dear God, thank you so much for leading us and guiding us. Help us to follow you 
wherever you want us to go. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a great week, guys. Now in time in our service, we give back to God a portion of what he has given to us. You may give through our website using eGive, mail in your gift, or drop it by the church office. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we present our tithes and offerings to you now as a token of our love for you. We know that our financial giving is not the only thing you require. Remember your mandate to take your gospel to the world. We remember that you desire us to love you with all our hearts, minds, and our souls, and to love our neighbors as ourselves. Help us to measure up in your love and in your service. Amen. blood is one children of generations of every nation of kingdom come and don't let your heart be troubled hold your head up I don't fear no evil fix your eyes on one true God is madly in love with you take courage hold on be strong remember where help comes from
morning scripture comes from Genesis 16, 7 through 10. The angel of the Lord found Hagar by a spring of water in the wilderness, the spring on the way to Shur. And he said, Hagar, slave girl of Sarai, where have you come from and where are you going? She said, I am running away from my mistress Sarai. The angel of the Lord said to her, return to your mistress and submit to her. The angel of the Lord also said to her, I will so greatly multiply your offspring that they cannot be counted for multitude. The word of God for the people of God. Will you pray with me? Oh, holy God, this is the story of our lineage in you. It's one that's not talked about a lot or preached on a lot, but it's still part of our story. Help us to hear your word for us this day as we continue to live as your people. We ask this in thy holy name. Amen. This is a complicated story that includes Abraham and Sarah, but before their name was changed. So it's Abram and his wife, Sari, and her Egyptian slave, Hagar. God has promised Abram that he will become a great nation. If one could count the dust, so would the number of Abram's offspring be. If Abram looked up to the heavens and counted the stars, so would his descendants be. God has promised Abram that even though he is an old man and that he's married to an old woman, God has promised that he will have a child, descendants, family, an entire nation, an entire people. And these people will be blessed by God to be a blessing to the world. God has shared this promise with Abram, who then shared it with his wife, Sari. It has been 10 years now since God made that promise to Abram. Sari, his wife, remains old and barren and beyond childbearing years. How long was she and Abram supposed to wait for God to act? Had God forgotten the promise that God had made? Sari decided to take matters into her own hands, you know, to help God's promise on a little bit. She gives her Egyptian slave, Hagar, to Abram as his wife, which is part of the tradition of those days. Now note that Hagar has no voice or say in this matter. After all, she is Sari's slave. Note also that Abram doesn't say a word either. He follows the directions of his wife, takes Hagar as his own wife, and she conceives. When Hagar learns that she bears Abram's child, she looks upon Sari with contempt. Sari complains to Abram, who finally speaks, she's your slave girl, you do with her as you please. Notice that Abram did not call Hagar his wife, but Sari's slave. So Sari dealt harshly with Hagar, and Hagar ran away. The angel of the Lord finds Hagar over a hundred miles away from Abram's camp by a spring in the wilderness on the way to Shur. Shur means the wall. It is just on the outskirts of Egypt, nothing but dry, arid, rolling sand dunes and gravel. Hagar stops in this wilderness place beside a spring. So many, like Hagar, find themselves in the wilderness. Jacob found himself in the wilderness when he stole his brother's birthright and had to run for his life. 
Moses and the Israelites found themselves wandering in the wilderness for 40 years as God formed them into a people. Elijah found himself in the wilderness when Queen Jezebel threatened to kill him and he went on the run. Jesus was sent into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit before he began his ministry. The wilderness is part of our faith journey. It's a place of solitude. It's a place of loneliness. It's a place of struggle. It's a place of trying to find clarity. It's a place where we seek after God. Lynn is a wilderness experience. We've been in a wilderness experience for a whole year now with this pandemic, living isolated, one from the other. What have we learned in this time? Where is God leading us now? As we begin this Lenten season, where have we come from? And where exactly are we going? What lies between the life we lived before the pandemic and the life God wants us to live after the pandemic? That's a question I asked of our leadership board the other night. Who are we now and who is it that God is calling us to be, to prepare to be when this is all over? What's God's new vision for us, our new future and possibilities? In this wilderness experience where we are now, how can we move closer to Jesus in our walk with him so that the dust from his shoes fall upon us? How can we learn from him, grow and live in his ways? The good news is that there is always a spring, a well, a river, somewhere along the journey to satisfy our thirst for God. When water, wells, rivers, and springs appear in the scripture, God is there doing a new thing, just like in our baptism, ask the woman at the well. Hagar is in the wilderness up against the wall, and by this spring, when the angel of the Lord appears to her, an Egyptian from another land with other gods, and this God calls her by name. Hagar, slave girl of Syria, where have you come from and where are you going? As I read this text in a devotion back in January, I was struck by the angel's question of Hagar, where have you come from and where are you going? It brought back to mind the words in the Gospel of John, chapter 13, at the Last Supper, when John says, Jesus, knowing that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, tied a towel around his waist, took a basin, and began to wash his disciples' feet. Clearly, these, there is something in our call to ministry, something in our call to serve others, that asks us to know where we come from and where we are going. So I ask you, this Lent, where have you come from and where are you going? As I mentioned, Hagar is an Egyptian slave girl. She has no power or say over her life. She's come from Egypt, bought as a slave, given to her master's husband without any say. She runs away and she finds herself up against this wall, this wall of having to deal with to go back to Egypt or to return to the slavery of Abram and Sari. God comes to her. Just as God comes to the Israelites when they are enslaved by Egypt. Do you get the flip here? 
Just as God comes to those who find themselves in the wilderness, just as God comes to us through Jesus the Christ, God's word made flesh, God finds this runaway pregnant slave girl in the wilderness and calls her by her name, Hagar. This foreign slave girl is the first person, first person in the Old Testament to encounter an angel of the Lord. And she's the only woman in the Old Testament that God speaks to directly and calls by name. She's also the first woman to receive a promise from God that her offspring will be many just like Abram's. Why does all this matter? Because one day all of us will find ourselves in the wilderness if we haven't already. One day we will find ourselves up against the wall with nowhere to go and no apparent way out. People find themselves in trouble with nowhere to turn, forgotten in an isolated wilderness with only contempt coming at them. Some people find themselves at a crossroad and do not know which way to turn. No matter where you are in your faith journey, what wilderness you are in, even if you find yourself up against a wall with no clarity at all, God will find you. Even if you are running away from something or running towards something, God is there with you. God hears your cry. No matter where you are in your journey, God finds us, is with us, comes to us, and calls us by name. Years ago, Disney's movie, The Hunchback of Notre Dame, contained a song entitled, God Help the Outcast, sung by Esmeralda, the gypsy outcast who helps the hunchback. The lyrics written by Alan Minken could be Hagar's song. I don't know if you can hear me or if you're even there. I don't know if you will listen to a humble prayer. They tell me I am just an outcast. I shouldn't speak to you. Still, I see your face and wonder, were you once an outcast too? God help the outcasts, hungry from birth. Show them the mercy they don't find on earth. The lost and forgotten, we look to you still. God help the outcasts, or nobody will. God help the outcasts, the poor and downtrod. I thought we all were the children of God. Now, Hagar is an outcast with no power, no hope, no faith, no voice, no God, and no community. She's running away from slavery, running toward Egypt, running back to home. And she finds herself up against a wall, and God finds her, comes to her, speaks to her, makes a way for her and then blesses her. If God comes to an outcast like Hagar, God will surely come to you and me. This is the first Sunday of Lent, the time when people purposefully enter the wilderness to find God, to become closer to God, to let God find them, to discern God's will for them. Some people fast from things and some people take on things in order to draw closer to God. It's a time to remember where we come from. From dust we came, to dust we shall return. It's a time to remember where we are going. Marked by the ashes of Palm Sunday and the sign of the cross, we remember that we are a forgiven people that we are filled with God's grace and called to serve others in the name of Jesus. That sign of the cross is a sign of God's love exemplified in the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus the Christ. And that same love finds Hagar and blesses her and sends her back to be a servant of God and a part of our story. At the end of this text, 
Hagar does something that no other person in the scripture does. She names God, El Roy, the God who sees. The God who sees me. God sees Hagar, the outcast, hears her cry, knows her in the wilderness, and knows of her hopelessness. God sees her just as she is and comes to her and blesses her. Where have you come from? Where are you going? What wilderness do you find yourself in this Lent? Where is your living spring, where your God is doing a new thing. Where will God find you this journey? Where will God see you and call you by name? And how will God bless you on this journey of Lent? Maybe the question is what wilderness do you need to enter this Lent in order to grow closer to Christ, to find God's love and grace and blessing for you once more, to rediscover where you've come from and where you are going in order to find clarity in your calling as God's own child, as a minister of the gospel. So as you travel in this Lenten wilderness, may you discover where you're going. May you draw closer to Jesus. May you walk more in his ways. May you find strength and courage in the one who finds you and sees you. And in the end, may the angels of God attend your way and bless you. Amen.
As we enter into a time and spirit of prayer, I invite you to pray with me the prayer for Lent this day. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all day long. Be mindful of your mercy, O Lord, and of your steadfast love. Amen. As we prepare to enter into a time of prayer, I do want you to know that Sam Tankard died this past week of COVID, and we want to remember Sam, his walking among us, and his family, and his resurrection in Christ. We also want to um, lift up and remember Joe Hurd, who was in the hospital this week, as well as Margaret Johnson, who, has, um, who continues to be in rehab after a fall. So part of our Lenten prayer journey is, it says to light a candle and to pray in silence. So we will have a time of silent prayer as we light a candle and remember God's very presence with us. Let us pray in silence. O oh God, the one who sees, see us this day and walk this journey with us so that we can see Jesus. We long to see him all as he is. We long to see and know his grace and mercy. We long to confess our failures and short shortcomings and to be released from our past in order to go forth into the future to serve you oh god in this lenten journey we want to see jesus see jesus in each other in the strangers that we come by and see and greet in our family members, in our government, in our world, in our church. We long to see Jesus this Lenten time. Draw us ever closer to him as we seek his ways and follow him. O oh Lord, we pray for those who are in wilderness experiences. We pray for the community of Virginia Wesleyan University who lost one of their students this week. We pray for those who are struggling and with cancer and going through treatments. We pray with those who have lost loved ones. We pray for those who are living in assisted living or nursing homes and unable to be with family, to be embraced. We pray for those who are struggling at home with depression and isolation and loneliness. We pray for the leaders of all nations as we pray for our own. We pray for the people who have been impacted by all these different weather changes, and we lift up especially the people of Texas and pray that you would make a way for them to get the basics of water and food and shelter. Oh, come, Lord Jesus, for we want to see you as we pray together as you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against each other. But deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to receive this blessing. If you would enter into the wilderness of Lent, do not begin without a blessing. Do not leave without hearing who you are, a beloved child of God. You are no outcast. You belong to God. You are named by the one who goes before you. And if you find yourself up against the wall, look for water, look for a spring, look for the well, for God is doing a new thing in your midst. I cannot promise this blessing will protect you or free you from danger, from fear, from hunger or thirst for righteousness, nor will it protect you from injustice. But I can tell you that on this path, there will be God, there will be grace upon grace, and there will be angels who attend your way. Go in the name of God, our Creator, Christ our Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit, our Sustainer. Amen.